What is up, 007 heads, or as they're also known as James Lames? I don't know the name of the James Bond fandom. They're called uh, the Bondians. Bondians? Oh, oh they're, they're called, called Bail Bonds. Yes, yes, I love it. Well, hey, so today we wanted to talk about something a little different because James Bond is a franchise of movies obviously very well known. The movies just keep coming out and they definitely will probably never stop. Uh, as long as they make money, the final Daniel Craig one will actually be in theaters later this year, Supposedly. assuming that it doesn't Supposedly. get delayed again. James Bond is also a wide-ranging variety type video game series. It's kind of hard to describe and pin down in one genre because yes, most of them are shooters, but there have also been a lot of other ones like 007 Racing and early text-based adventures going all the way back to the 80s, actually, in 1982. So this is a franchise that had been going for a long, long time that is sort of on hiatus slash dead right now. Now, it was announced in 2020, late 2020, that IO Interactive was working on another James Bond game with the rights holders, but we don't know when that will happen and it was supposedly in pre-production. So we wanted to take a look back at James Bond as a franchise because some of these games are very, very unique and really interesting and fun. And in general, they help do a lot to change the shooter genre. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. This is something we'd like to talk about more in the future because James Bond is awesome. Uh, but let's, you know, hop right into it. Yeah, I think the, the best James Bond game is James Bond Jr. James with Bond the Jr. adventures of the villain Dr. Derange. Dr. Derange Very is, great I villain. mean, some people say Dr. Disrespect was inspired by Dr. Derange. <laughs> he was, actually. He was. No, uh, so, you know, that's the thing, by the way. James Bond Jr. is a real game. I don't know if I have any footage of that piece of garbage, but... You probably won't ever. <laughs> I don't think so. I hope I don't. The thing with this series that's really interesting is just how different it was like how many different games came out there were quite a few of them and they were different genres the most popular was the shooter genre i think that was really revolutionized actually though with 007 the original goldeneye 007 you know the one based off the pierce brosnan movie which obviously would be remade later but the whole thing with that game is it's actually known for in a lot of ways revolutionizing 3d shooters like, right you wouldn't have some of the things you have today at least probably not in the same form they are without 007 Goldeneye. Yeah, that game was pretty revolutionary in that genre, like you said. Um, it's actually the first game I can think of off the top of my head that was actually like a first-person 3D shooter game. You know, and that game was super popular. Obviously, it was uh, remade later on, like you said, into probably one of my favorite games of all time. Goldeneye Reloaded. Goldeneye. I played that. Well, not really Reloaded. I played oh, the original yeah. Goldeneye on the Wii. But that's not the original. It's the original remake. Re okay, sorry. I played the original remake Goldeneye on the Wii. It's confusing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I played, okay, I want, I want to tell you a very quick story on this. All right. With Goldeneye. This is how many hours I put into this. So I put, I played that multiplayer all the time, right? I put in like 200 hours into the multiplayer to get up to level 56, which was the max level in the multiplayer mode. Then my Wii broke. So we had to get a new Wii. And because of that, we weren't able to get our saved data off our old Wii. So then I got a, got a new Wii. I put another like a hundred hours into the multiplayer, got to level like 53, then that Wii broke. And oh, then we man. ended up just getting a Wii U because that game just came... cursed your. your I know, console. I know. <laughs> and I put in like a hundred hours on on the Wii U on Goldeneye. So in the mul I put so many hours into the multi. Well, this isn't including how game. much you played the campaign because you used oh, to play through the yeah. campaign over and over. Too. I played through that campaign on the Wii probably like seven or eight times. Yeah, all the way through, like just completely through. Then that's not even including just me loading up a random level to play it. Obviously, it's not like we miss this franchise just because you like it. Right. But right. the whole point of it is that these games were fairly unique, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and say, like, if you compare them to the newest shooter out there, that they're always better. Right. I do think that the GoldenEye campaign is actually very interesting, the reloaded one. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was done well and it's really, really fun, you know? And they also usually utilized a different format of health. Now, not always, but a lot of these games utilize sort of the body armor and health format of health instead of just the 
automatic regeneration healing. Later ones, you could actually choose between the two in terms of difficulty, but that was an interesting way to do it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of something like Doom where it was like a more difficult shooter experience. It wasn't just kind of like a lazy romp through set pieces, which I do think a lot of shooters are now, you know? I mean, there are hard parts of them, but generally with something like Call of Duty on the campaign, unless you crank that up to like hardened or veteran, you're not gonna have really many issues with it. Right. Um, they're just kind of running through set pieces. The thing with James Bond is it introduced new worlds that I think were very unique and a lot of unique characters and weapons. And you know what Elsa did too, um, in games like Agent Under Fire and even GoldenEye Reloaded, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, all these games, is it focused on gadgets, which mm -hmm. is something that I think shooters don't really do as much anymore. They focus very much on guns, but the thing with James Bond was there would be gadgets you would need to progress, like maybe your grappling hook, or maybe you would need to hack a terminal, stuff like that. That's not really done anymore, you know? Like, those gadgets had a place. Um, and it reminds me of something like, I don't know, this is a weird comparison, but something like Spider-Man on the PS4. Yeah. Uh, you know, where you get these gadgets and they all serve unique purposes at, at different points in the game. That actually made this a unique brand of shooter that I think is sort of lost now to time. Mm -hmm. um, the closest thing I can think of it in a way, and it's not even a shooter, is something like Dishonored does make you know use of things like that as well with teleportation and other gadgetry. But a lot of these first person games that are actually shooters now don't really do that unless it's a gimmick in that level. Like for example, in a Call of Duty level where they're like, we gave you a stealth camouflage for this one level just to let you play around, or we gave you a grappling hook this level, right. have fun. You know, they use it as a gimmick, but this actually introduced that idea or popularized it of having these gadgets that all serve unique purposes in a shooter game. Yeah, yeah, and like Agent Under Fire, there was like that cool laser yeah. that allowed you to like cut through uh, screws and stuff like yeah, that. So could, yeah, so you can like get get through grates. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Like that was always something that stood out with the Bond franchise in general for me was it wasn't just a shooter. It was, it, it actually made you like sneak around, use stealth, um, hide behind things, wait for people to pass by, you know, so you can move and then, you know, break into a door or something in the back. And it really made you like think outside the box. Well, there were also multiple ways to tackle most situations in these games. You could run in and play it like COD. Right. But you'll probably die. Yeah. Unless you're really good. Like then, me, yes. Then, yeah, then if you're like you, then you'll just win, right? But, yeah, it was it was more encouraged to kind of sneak around and mm -hmm. use stealth and use things in the environment to your advantage. Well, and there was also always hidden stuff, too. That was really cool. Can I mention, too, we've been talking about single player this whole time, and there's probably even more to say on single player, but one thing that this does deserve credit for, especially with the original GoldenEye, is this revolutionized the modern shooter multiplayer? Yes. The idea of you running around shooting at your friends. Now, I know split screen yes. multiplayer is not as big anymore. Yeah. yeah. Okay, settle down there, Dylan. Sorry. I know <laughs> that, like, the split screen multiplayer is not as big anymore because of online, but, you know, even things like Call of Duty, Halo, uh, all these online shooters, I would even say to an extent, things like Fortnite, these third person shooters now. Mm -hmm. One of the original games to sort of popularize that idea, and I'm saying popularize because um, John actually, that's what I named him <laughs> now, in the comments will tell us that somebody else made it first. Right. But this popularized the idea of you <clears throat> versus other people with guns, you know, not just a campaign. Mm -hmm. It might be hard to believe, but for a long time, the shooter genre of video games and just video games in general were only about single player. Right. That was really it. And there were some co-op multiplayer things with Mario Bros and other stuff. But generally, it was like you sit down, play a game, fight the computer. And if you play it with your friends, they would watch. Or you would play it, and they would play it at their house, and then you'd talk about it. Right. This was one of, like... And, and what's weird is, if you watch... Uh, I wouldn't say documentaries, but, like, things like Did You Know Gaming and other videos about 007, the original GoldenEye 007... This was almost an afterthought. They originally were not even going to include that multiplayer. It was kind of put in just as like a fun little extra thing to mess around in. Mm -hmm. And it became so popular that there are people who still play this as a party game today. They play 007, the original GoldenEye's multiplayer split screen on like their N64. 
together today in 2021. Yeah. That has like a long standing lasting community and it went on to not just inspire the multiplayer for every other golden or golden eye every other 007 game but also affect the shooter genre of video games forever like revolutionizing and changing the idea of what multiplayer could be this is a series that has been dead for a while when was the last game i think it was 2012 was 007 yeah. legends yeah this game series that helped revolutionize what the modern shooter is um uh, the video game shooter, not the uh-oh kind. <laughs> you know, it's it's just dead. Yeah, I think that's a very good point that you brought up. Um, I think it's also important to know that there, note that there was a lot of James Bond games that came out before the, the GoldenEye game, like the original. And... Most of them weren't good. Most of them were pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there was like the cool James Bond, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel game called James Bond The Duel. Uh... <laughs> And like other, you know, cool stuff like that. But yeah, it, it is really, it, it, GoldenEye was like the the big game, like of the 90s, like you said, and it's transcended even to this day. 007 Legends was by far the worst Bond game to come out in years. And it, it's just so weird to me because that game, I played that game, I was excited for it. I bought it. I thought it was going to be the GoldenEye replacement because I put like 400 hours into GoldenEye. I thought I was like, oh, nice. Now I have a new one on the next gen. I played through that game. The campaign was like, okay. The multiplayer was horrible. It did. The multiplayer didn't even run properly. Like you would go online and it just wasn't working. Like hardly anyone played online. It was bad. Right. It was a very obvious COD clone. It was a very which, obviously COD clone that, that did pathetic. not work out. It didn't work out. No. And what's weird to me is like that was it. I mean, I get like I get like having a game that bombs and then just being like, wow, no one cares about this anymore. But you would think a gaming company would be like, well, all these other games were so successful in the past. We just had one bad one. Well, let's just make another one. But can I can I point something out? <clears throat> um, this was Activision, right? This was Activision that ran the franchise from 2006 to like 2013. So their idea is like bad game. Everyone hates it. We're no, done. no, no, no. Activision's like the Disney of video games, in my opinion. Yeah, they make some good stuff. Like you mm -hmm. can sit here and argue, no, they don't. They don't make anything good. But if you look at it objectively, like go sit down, even if you're a moderate fan of FPS games, and even if you hate multiplayer. Go sit down and play through, like, MW2's campaign. Yes. Go sit down and play through the new Modern Warfare campaign. Go sit down and play Zombies on Black Ops 3. Mm -hmm. Go sit down... And, oh, dude, go sit down and play, like, Crash 4. That is an Activision game. Right. They've made good games. But here's the problem with their ideology, just like Disney, is... Oh, this made money? It didn't make enough money. This makes more money. Right. Therefore, screw that. That's kind of their their idea, and it's it's too bad because things like Crash Four that are profitable, then they're like, well, it's not profitable enough. Move those guys over to Warzone, right? And then a bunch of people leave the company. Like for example, Toys for Bob, you know, who worked on some of these games like Spyro, the Spyro mm -hmm. Reignited and stuff. Half of their staff quit the company now. I know it's sad because Bob's not getting his toys. I know exactly, and like I like to toy Bob. I mean, I like Bob's toys. Too. <laughs> right, right. Bob, Al's toy barn. Right. I want to put park my car in the toy barn. But no, <laughs> the thing with that is, now let's say Activision brings back that team to make another Spyro or Crash or something, right? Uh, well, who cares? Because like half of that team is gone now because you alienated them and pushed them into projects they didn't want to do, so they quit. Right. And so I think that Activision has this, not to make this about Activision, so I'll get off this topic in a second, but Activision has that ideology like Disney where it's like it didn't make enough money even though it was successful, so too bad. And right. if, if there was one flop anywhere, it's dead for years. Mm -hmm. It's so focused on money. And the thing with Bond was that it was focused more on creativity, the yeah. franchise, up to that point. I think 007 Legends is not creative at all. But up to that point, I think a lot of the games from GoldenEye on, not that there were zero flops in there, were focused on creativity of single player and multiplayer. They did have different genres. There was a mixture of first person and third person. A lot of people don't talk about 007 Bloodstone. That's a very good game. There was actually more of a third person shooter. Yeah. So I think and that there's also 007 Racing. 
Yeah, 007 yeah, Racing. A racing game. <laughs> That's true. And you know what else, by the way? The, the one thing we haven't even talked about very much that maybe we should have mentioned earlier is that as a character, 007 is very interesting. You know, he's a very unique and complicated character in the movies. And while they can't quite delve to that level in the video games that are more arcade-like, it's worth mentioning that the wide cast of characters in these games is unique. You know, whether it's like Bond himself or M or Q or any of the people he's working with or the villains of different games, mm -hmm. they all seem like unique human beings that are interesting and it does feel like you're sort of in one of those um i think it's mgm owns it it feels like you're in one of those movies for like 007 taking part in it and you know you were even mentioning to me in something like 007 agent under fire now he doesn't exactly get his uh beak wet if you know what i mean unlike in most of the movies his but bond jr his bond jr doesn't uh, <laughs> go for a swim but um, the thing is, there's a couple of girls in that game that, like, you know, kind of hit on him and stuff. And the thing is, I saw this really cringe thing on the back of, I don't know what it was, if it was Bloodstone or what, where, it, like, the advertisement was signature Bond moments. That was, like, a <laughs> selling point. But the thing is, like, there are a lot of Bond-feeling moments in these games. Yeah. Where you feel, not to quote IGN here on Batman, but you really do feel like you are James Bond and mm -hmm. you are a part of that universe. You are a spy. And I think that that feeling, you know, of being a spy taking part in this underground espionage universe where you're outnumbered and outmatched and outgunned and on your own, that feeling is very different than, hey, I'm Sergeant McClary, you know, in the US Marines and I have like 10,000 troops backing me up and I'm in the army. Like, right. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those games, but they're kind of a dime a dozen now. Right. You know, and Halo is able to capture that feeling of being alone too, but it, it's, again, it's not the same. You're like a death machine. Mm -hmm. The thing with 007 was that you were outmatched, outgunned, and sort of undercover, and you needed to use that stealth. So it, it mixed that unique gameplay in with that unique style of character, and that doesn't feel like modern shooters. Modern shooters are very much military-driven, mm -hmm. and this was very stealth, undercover, trying to keep a low profile driven, almost a little more like comparing Splinter Cell to Ghost Recon, you know? Right. Where Splinter Cell is like this kind of stealth experience, and yes, you can kill people, but it's much more unique. I really miss that in gaming. That's kind of why we wanted to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. It, the Bond games is, is a franchise I've missed as well. You know, I, I grew up playing agent under fire that was like the game i played when i was a kid stop agent hate that's what stop. i was saying <laughs> <laughs> right and i remember i just remember having a blast on that you know we my me and my brother and then our friend used to play the multiplayer all the time together and it was so much fun and then uh you know obviously i already had talked about goldeneye and my experience with that and 007 legends but it it really created a it really created like a feeling inside of myself that I have not gotten with gaming in a long time. And I think a part of that is kind of like you already explained, the feeling of I'm playing a shooter because I love shooters, but I'm also playing a spy game. Mm -hmm. And that, and it just, and it, it's such a unique franchise, a unique genre in a unique spin on video games that I really feel like the world needs to get back to. Mm -hmm. And whether that is a big 007 game, because I think they really should make <clears throat> another one. Yeah. Um, or something else, like a really big like uh, Splinter Cell game. Now, I know there has been Splinter Cell games. Coming very, out. But very rarely. Right. I mean, it's the same sort of thing. <clears throat> where it's kind of dead in the water. Yeah. It, it's just, I don't know. I feel like, I just feel like that's a genre of video games that was very popular when we were kids. But then the world left it. Mm -hmm. And I guess my thing is I wish that Activision would go back to it and just make a 007 game. To speak about Activision a little bit <clears throat> one more time, I hadn't known this until we researched it, but they actually did lose the license later on. Like they had said that they weren't going to work on licensed games anymore. And that was actually in 2013, but it was just never widely publicized, at least to my knowledge. And if it was, I was in high school at this time, right. so I probably wasn't paying attention to it. But I think that that's interesting because now, you know, with 
IO supposedly working on it, right? I think it was IO who was going to work on the the new game. Um, there's a chance to right those wrongs. Right. There's a chance to give it to a company that won't just kill it if they have one misfire. Mm-hmm. Bond is a relic of the past in a lot of ways, especially in the movies, but that's why he works. He's almost a character out of time in a lot of ways. Like, he is a character that is, in the movies, fiercely loyal to his country, almost to a fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gives absolutely everything he can for the greater good. And to to women. To a fault. He gives women everything they could possibly need. Yeah, deserve. he does that too. No, but, you know... The thing with that character is that he works as that relic to the past. He's a little misogynistic. He has an alcohol problem. He is a clearly dysfunctional character. And just like in the movies, he's a relic to the past, so are some of his games, but in a good way. They're like a testament to what gaming was, in a way, without without getting too philosophical here. You know, a single-player-driven story video game where you become the character and it's not just the kind where you create your own character which those are awesome Mm -hmm. but the kind where they say this is james bond you are him exist in his world as him that sort of role-playing game i think there's a huge demand for still um you know that sort of stepping into the shoes of a specific character and enjoying it we can still see that man like ratchet and clank Uncharted, you know, these games that are character focused based on a single character that you don't even create, uh, those are massively popular. People love that sort of thing. I think that you just need to make it charming, capitalize on what it was, modernize it for the new era, but don't modernize it by copying other people. Yeah. Yes, I understand that people copied you, like the original GoldenEye 007, to become popular, but you can't just go around copying them and expecting to just make COD, but for young teenagers, right. and it's good. That's not how it works. That's not what James Bond was. That's why Legends failed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I guess that's kind of all mostly that I have to say about it. unique world, unique story, unique characters, and just such a unique feeling of being a spy, like you said, that we need to go back to. Do you have anything else before we wrap it up? Um, no, I don't have anything else. Nothing at all? Nope. Okay, awesome. I've already explained all my stuff awesome. here. Awesome. Well, so we're going to make you regurgitate it. If anyone, if anyone like, wants to play GoldenEye, I'm game. This is a, Actually, this it's, is, it's shut down now. This now is an like, English class. We're going to make you regurgitate your points three times. Okay. But if you do it one too many times, we'll say you're repetitive and give you an A-. minus. That sounds really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Were you a fan of the 007 games? Would you like to see them back? Have you never played them before? I highly recommend quite a few of them. Actually, um, you know, the original 007, the original GoldenEye 007 was really good. Personally, now, I'd recommend the remake of it. It's different, but I think that it's uh, it holds up better if you're a first-time player. Uh, also, though, I will say some underrated ones. Uh, Bloodstone and even Quantum of Solace, the game. Pretty good, you know? So these are really fun games. Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments down below. We hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for checking this out. Be sure to subscribe and check out all the links down below, including to the secondary channel Degenerate Plays, where Nate and I both are playing through a bunch of different games together and having a good time. My wife is over there as well as some of my other friends. So we hope to see you there. It is over 10,000 subscribers now, thanks to you at home. Have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, stay shway.